Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and this is the uh, extensuation, ex uh, part two of drawing this roadmap. And I'm almost through with the tutorial because you could do all that. One thing I just, I went ahead and took the liberty of drawing in another road. And you need to think about when you're doing things like this to right click them and turn them onto a cusp when you really need to get some detail. A cusp is going to allow you to move one side without moving the other side individually. So cusp can really be helpful, especially in this case of drawing a map. Because uh, see here I'm drawing, I'm moving both sides. Well, if I don't want that, I can right click it and turn it into a cusp. And then I just move the one handle at a time. Anyway, but the real part two would be to like to how I'm going to incorporate this road sign, which is Highway 1 or 80. I just went on the internet and I actually went to Georgia State Highway Signs or Highway Signs and it came up with this. And I would immediately make you quite a few copies of it once you get your size. And, you know, that's pretty appropriate size right there. So we're going to control D. And we're going to move it off the chart. And then I'm going to hit the plus sign a couple times and just make a couple more. If you hit control D continuously, it's just going to go off the page. Now you take your sign and you want to make sure it's not a hairline because when you draw it out, but you want it pretty thin. I'm going to say one and a half points and scale to object. That looks pretty good. Then just bring it into your highway. And use your virtual segment delete key to delete that red line. That red line will stop. And it's actually stopping because the, the the 80 in there. And once you get that done, you can critique it more once you moved your map out of the way. Let's just start. Let's uh, make sure our nudge factor is set back on 12. Let's say we're done with the map. Let's start nudging stuff around. And we're going to nudge everything we drew. And because remember, we had everything locked. So this map is locked. We can't move it. And then we'll also nudge our box. Now you would need to still go in there and write the, you know, the cities in and towns, but. I'm just going to get this out of the way so we can get this a little closer. Virtual segment delete key should go right up to the edge of that box, and it did. Now, with that saying, I still would want it a little bit more perfect. And there's a lot of ways you can go up and do things like that. And also, you could probably, let's see if this doesn't work. Let's back up a little bit. Let's actually extend this. Let's try a little experiment. See if back minus front doesn't work. And I want that in interior a little bit. And I'm having some snap to object issues. So I'm going to go to view, snap to. Well, it shouldn't be snapping to it. Something, something's con constraining me. Let's change our nudge distance. You have to get off your page. Let's just set your nudge distance point zero zero two again. Let's zoom in here. Because you really want this part to look good because you're going to have a number in there. So let's grab that node and let's just nudge it over. Make sure it's highlighted. And so we can minutely move it over. Now let's just try this. This line should be one line. And you can see it picks that up. So let's shift our new object. And let's try, that didn't work, that didn't work. So it's not going to, well, it's working, but the thickness of the line isn't going to work. And also, once you get past your map, you can see some faults. And there's a lot of ways to clean this up. That one is so close, it's not going to do it. Because you want, once you turn it black, 
it doesn't really matter, but I don't, I would not want that. That wouldn't be acceptable. And it's because it's a thick line. Let's, let's go back and see this line is 606 points. Let's change it to a hairline and see we're right on the line. There's really nothing you can do about that. And maybe that's how we should have done back on his front. Now, with that said, there's no six points. Just always remember you can type in six and get six points. And don't forget to scale with object. Now, we're a little bit off that. So a couple of things you could do. You could make this um, three points and have you a little bit more space for that. Because once you turn them both black, you're not going to be able to see that. Uh, line and then just take in the text of 80 make it look like you're um, looking make it look like the map now the only other thing I'm going to say is you know like when it's blown up like this you can see that little jig you know soften that up a little bit and like I said in the first video you're not going to drive off this map now the only other thing you need to do Tell you what, let's turn everything black. The only other thing you need to do is to, if you're going to put this in a frame, now this I actually made an outline, so the, that'll look pretty cool. If you're going to put this in a frame, you've got to have some wood out here for the frame, for the, the edge of the frame to actually stop it from coming through the glass. And if you put glass, maybe it's not as important. But you could always take this square, and let's just do this. Let's just, I'm going to erase everything. I don't need any more. I'm not going to finish the map. Okay, that's locked. Let's group this together, Control G. And I'm going to have to unlock that. Unlock all objects. And let's just get that out of the way. Now, I've got this locked, hopefully. I'm going to press P and put it in the center of the page, which is really weird that it already was. And my box is not square because my map wasn't square. So I'm going to ungroup it. Go to range, group, ungroup. I'm going to take my box and I'm going to control D and make a copy of the box. And I'm going to grow the box by a hundred and Five percent. Well, this should have done it because I was locked. Maybe I wasn't locked. Let's back up. Because that is locked. 105. See, both of them go 105 now. Press P and put it in the center of the page. Now you have a border for the lake to go in. But you, we don't need it all. So then what you can do is take your virtual segment delete key and delete this part of the, the line. And you kind of understand what I did. So now I have a, a map out here or a piece of my plywood that is going to, let's do this. Let me set my nudge factor back on 12 inches. Let me get all the roads off the map. Now, why is it only, I must have put it on, put it on two, put it on 12. And this is what your plywood is going to look like. Look. So we've got everything off the map. I'm going to check one thing real quick. I don't really like that. Kind of a double line. And that, and this, I want. I want that part of the Atlantic Ocean to be there. So let's fill this in. And let's use blue. Well, no, let's don't use blue. Because it's not going to be the ocean. Well, let's just use 30% gray. So there's what you're going to have to work with in your frame because this area is going to 
And you need to think about how wide your frame is. You know, you can always use the virtual or the parallel dimension tool. And we're only a quarter of an inch, less than a quarter of an inch, because you don't want this sticking out past your edge of your frame. But that's really all that is to drawing this map. And then as always, you can bring this back and just bring it back in. And then just put it back on top of your map and start naming names of your roads. And like I said in the first video, you know, make sure these are run off the map or at least to the edge of the map because you don't want it to have a road that just stops to nowhere. You know, like since we made, remember we made the box bigger, we just take these roads and just extend them out. They don't have to go really past it because you're going to have a quarter inch gap. But if you're going to do it, make it look good. And that's pretty easy. And then what I would do in this case is to back up this wood. Well, let's just draw one. Let's control D the outside. And we've got our nudge factor on 12. Let's color this guy in with blue. Okay. Let me get the roads out of here again. So this will just kind of show you what it's going to look like. We're going to color this in with It doesn't really matter. I don't know why I'm worrying about that. Let's just do this color. So there's your wood of your map. There's what it's going to look like. If you have this board painted all blue, you don't have to paint the whole thing, but paint like this much of it. This is going to be a two-layer map, and it's going to be cool because that's all you're going to see. This is going to be your road map. You know, you need to, since you maybe know more about the area, fill in these spots that are maybe islands, or take them away, and critique this a little bit more. But I would definitely do this in two, two pieces of wood. Take a piece the exact same size, paint it blue, and then draw your road map, which will actually be a you know, light tan. Um, let me just make a light tan like a piece of plywood. All I'm doing is holding down the control button and adding a little yellow. So there's what your plywood might look like. And that will look pretty cool with the map. So you'll have a coastline in, in, in two layers of wood. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.